Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back. If you don't already know who I am, I go by Capuchino here on YouTube and I film all kinds of cozy content ranging from digital journaling to vlogs, bookish content, tech videos like unboxing cute tech videos, kind of everything honestly. Today I wanted to film a very relaxed kind of chatty video where I talk about all of my favorite cozy games that I've been playing at the moment. These are really going to be mainly PC games and a little bit of Switch games. I've seen a couple of videos like this going around and I thought I should share mine as well. I'll be talking a little bit about each game. I'll be reading the descriptions and kind of what it's about. A lot of these games are farming or RPG games. Just letting you know. I'll be talking about the most popular ones or the more well-known ones first and then I'll go into more games that you may not have heard of. I play a lot of indie games so if you want me to create a video where I just talk about small indie games let me know. So without further ado let's jump right into the video. First I definitely want to say that Animal Crossing is definitely on this list but not really. I don't want to include it directly into this list because I feel like everybody knows what Animal Crossing is. Animal Crossing is definitely a part of one of the games I play but we're gonna talk about maybe ones that you haven't heard of before. The next game on this list is very popular as well but I feel like a lot of people don't really know. I feel like people know this game but they still need an extra push to actually buy it and that is Stardew Valley. If you don't have this game in your possession already, this is an open-ended country life RPG, farming, talking to villagers and collecting, mining, taking care of livestock, and creating your farm. Cool thing about this game, it is also multiplayer so you can share a save slot with three other people, so four people in total. It is only $15 which is super super cheap for a, such a massive game. The available platforms are for PC, Mac, Xbox, PS4, Switch, iOS, and Android. If you don't have a console or you don't have a PC or a switch you can definitely get this on your phone. You've inherited your grandfather's old farm plot in Stardew Valley. Armed with the hand-me-down tools and a few coins you set out to begin your new life. Can you learn to live off the land and turn these overgrown fields into a thriving home? It won't be easy ever since Joja Corporation came to town. The old ways of life have all but disappeared. The community center, once the town's most vibrant hub of activity, now lies in shambles but the valley seems full of opportunity. With a little dedication you might just be the one to restore Stardew Valley to greatness. This is one of the games that I have on PC and on Nintendo Switch. I was playing it on PC first, I excelled a lot on that, and then I modded it like crazy. The downside to the Nintendo Switch one is that you can't mod it with really, really pretty mods, but that's okay. The base game is still amazing. Next is a more recent game that I've been playing, which is Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral Town. Growing up, I played the Wii Harvest Moon games, which was Tree of Tranquility and and Animal Parade and those were literally my favorite games. I think those were the first cozy farming RPGs I've ever played. This game was an old game and then it got remastered for the Switch and the PC. This one is $40 but it does go down in price. It is available on PC and Switch and it is a single player game. This one I have for my Nintendo Switch. I did buy it first on the PC and it just did not feel natural to me to be playing one of these games on PC. So I refunded it and then I got it for my Switch. If you like chibi and chunky animations, this one is perfect. I love the graphics on this game. We have sprites where you have, I think, eight little sprites that can help you on the farm if you befriend all of them. They can water your plants, they can harvest your plants, or take care of your livestock. Mineral Town, an idyllic hamlet surrounded by lush forests and clear waters. When you were young, you spent a summer there on your grandfather's farmstead. Country life was unlike anything back in the big city, but before long, you found yourself basking in Minerals Town's natural wonders. You dashed through the wilderness, went fishing, and even helped for the livestock. Most importantly, however, you made a new friend, the first you'd ever have. At that fateful vacation's end, you left the farm and your friend, but you never forgot them. Twenty years have passed since then. You arrive once more in Mineral Town, but the fields have fallen into ruin since your grandfather's passing. The crops and cattle from your child childhood are gone, only rocks and weeds remain. Your grandfather may also be gone, but as you look upon his land, you make a heartfelt vow to raise the old farm, your new farm, back to its former glory. The story of seasons has begun anew. In this game, I found it really hard to pick a person to marry because I thought they were all so interesting and entertaining, so I kind of just kept gifting them things and like reaching purple hearts with all of them. So yeah, this one is a really good one. Next is a game you probably don't know of. It is My Time at Portia. It, it is pretty popular 
popular, but also some people may not know it. Adventure Indie RPG Simulation. This game normally is $29.99 USD. These are all USD, but it does go on sale for PC and Switch, and it is a single player game. When I initially got this game, I got it for PC, but then I bought it for Nintendo Switch. I do recommend going for the PC version because the Nintendo Switch one has not been updated for some reason. It needs a lot of work done still, but I think they're done working on it, so I really do recommend going for the PC version. But if you really like the game and you don't really care about any of the newer updates, then definitely get this one when it's on sale. I got it for $7 and it was worth it because it's not done. The difference between this game and all the other games I play is that you actually own a workshop, so you have to craft a lot of things. And when I say things, I mean like water mills, pieces of buildings, machinery, like huge machinery, or even something as simple as basic tables and chairs, and it just kind of ranges from the biggest thing to the smallest item. You can farm in this game, but it's not really as important. It is su such a different feeling game. I feel like this is another statement game that will be inspiring games to come. There is fighting in this game as well if you want. You don't have to, but if you want to progress in the story, you have a couple boss battles and stuff like that, which is not that bad. As long as you like level up and stuff, you'll be fine. Start a new life in an enchanting town of Portia. Restore your paws, neglected workshop to its former glory by fulfilling commissions, growing crops, raising animals, and befriending the quirky inhabitants of this charming post-apocalyptic land. Armed with your paws, old handbook, and workbench, you must gather mine and craft your way to being crowned the number one workshop in Portia. Help the locals rebuild the town. The town of Portia is full of friendly new faces for you to meet, make friends, complete quests, exchange gifts, go on dates, and let romance blossom. Inspired by the magic of Studio Ghibli, my time at Portia whisks you away in a world of wonder that you won't forget. How will you spend your time at Portia? You unlock new places as you progress in the main story. The main story is actually pretty there. <laughs> a lot of these games you kind of just routine, there's not really a plot or anything, but this one does have a plot and as you progress in the main story you learn more and you learn so many new things. So this one is a definite. Next on this list is an indie developed game by a husband and wife duo and it is called Pumpkin Days. This I've just recently started playing on my gaming channel so if you want to go check out the gameplay, um, click somewhere up there. This is one of those games that have a lot of hype but it doesn't have a big enough audience and I hope to bring so much attention to it. It is a traditional farming RPG game where you can fish, mine, and catch different bugs and all those things, raise animals, and do the typical, you know, Harvest Moon, Stardew Valley-esque things. There's uh, the factory that is trying to come in and destroy the beautiful island. There's all those things, but the one thing that is super impressive about this game is it isn't a pixel game. It is a 3D animated game. The star features that caught my attention was the fact that when you create your character in the beginning of the game, you don't pick female or male. You just add what features you like, what features you don't like. You aren't necessarily male or female. Another thing, you can pick whoever you want to marry, whether female, male, whatever. One of the things that are super unique about this game is that you can be in a polyamorous, I can never say that word, <laughs> you can basically be in a marriage or relationship with multiple people and nobody will get upset. You'll have your partners at the wedding all together and it's super cool. I want to test that feature out so badly so I've just been playing the game. The controls and keys take a little bit to get used to but once you get the hang of it you can't stop thinking about it. The diversity in the game is amazing, the different types of music that they showcase, everything is just so diverse and it's so refreshing to see. This game is on PC and it retails for $24.99 which it is worth every single penny. It is kind of a hard game to run because there is so much in it. There aren't any loading screens. It's open world. Well, kind of open world, but it's an open map where you have no loading screens. You can wander wherever. It is just very, very impressive. There is a multiplayer mode. I think there's two, but I have not tested that out at all. So if you've tested it out, let me know how it is. Jounce Corp is an energy drink company that seeks to build its factory on the island. The residents build two large museums in hopes to fill with artifacts, flora and fauna to get the island a conservation status which will force Jounce Corp to leave. If you help with filling up the museum, then the factory construction will be delayed until they are forced to leave. However, if you allow Jounce Corp to build their factory, various natural resources around the island will grow scarce as they pollute the area. You can craft custom furniture and clothes, which I did not know you can do, which I'm super excited about. You can hunt for fossils and artifacts, catch bugs, raise kids, customize your farm however you'd like. There are festivals, festival mini games, and beekeeping, which I didn't know either, so that's awesome. If you're gonna try any of these 
games, I stress that you choose the indie games over the more popular games. I really do love supporting indie creators. It takes so much time to develop an entire game and I want to be able to support as best I can. The next one is also an indie game, which I am in love with. This game is called Kinseed and I just recently started playing it on my gaming channel as well, shameless plug. This is a pixel graphics RPG simulation game and it retails only for $9.99. Super cheap. This game is Stardew Valley and Fable. If you don't know what the Fable games are, another what? How? What are you doing? This game is created by some of the Fable developers, which is amazing to me. And it feels so much like Fable that it makes me so, it makes my heart so full. This game is early access. I want to stress that. There is still a lot of things being done and like you'll find bugs and stuff, but it is so charming. The coolest thing about this game is that they're trying to implement an aging mechanic. That's one of the things that really hooked me into this game. Besides the beautiful graphics and amazing music and hilarious humor. If I could find a clip of me laughing at one of the <laughs> jokes that I read on that. Also one of the things that I like about it is that you, it forces you to kind of feed into the lore and read all the pages and all the codex that you find and listen to what the people are saying because these pages will tell you tips and tricks of things that the game won't just automatically tell you. So as you discover in the game, you actually are creating your own knowledge in real life as well. There's blacksmithing, alchemy, I think they just came out with the Apothecary update, the relationship update. They're doing amazing right now, so please, please check this one out. Land of Quill is where you live. It is a place full of idyllic valleys and meadows, peaceful villages, and rosy-cheeked folk. A place ruled by no king or government. It is also a place surrounded by fairy tale forests that host mysterious towers, dark caves, and silent ruins. From the dreamy meadows of summer down to the hidden depths of ghost-like cavern. From the bizarre structures of Copper Pot Village to the festering waters of the shingles. Connecting the human places to the world is the path. All manner of monstrosities of folklore and fey folk, from jabberwocks to brownies, men of the woods to hobgoblins, whims to banshees, these and many more lurk in the darkness. Plant a mystical acorn that grows into a family tree in which your choices create its branches. Raise a family, farm the land, run shops, and explore a world where everyone ages. When you die, step into your children's shoes and continue your family's legacy. They put so much time and energy into it you can tell it is completely a passion project and it is something that is just so fulfilling when you play the game it's relaxing it's fun and it is it's it's one of the best and last but definitely not least is a game that isn't so rpg driven it is a game where you can just sit play and realize hours have gone by this game is called lemon cake lemon cake is on pc and it retails for 14.99 this is a casual 3d simulation game Game where you are running a bakery very very simple it is nothing like any of the games that I just mentioned where you are just in these three little levels and you go back and forth to create pastries for the customers and you build up to the point where you get like new stoves and you can upgrade and upgrade and it's just so addicting <laughs> I find myself coming back to this game so consistently I just put the game on and I listen to music and I just zone out for hours it looks delicious all of the foods and it it is such an amazing and charming game as well. I also play this one on my channel, so go check it out. Restore an abandoned bakery and prepare pastries from farm to table. Grow fresh ingredients in the greenhouse, cook pastries and sweets in the kitchen, and serve your baked goods to hungry customers in your own shop. Repair your bakery with the help of a friendly ghost, grow fruits and take care of your animals in the greenhouse, mix recipes and bake pastries in the kitchen, serve coffee and sweets to your customers, manage your schedule and get ready for the lunch rush. So this is like a very time management, not time management, well kind of time management type of game super easy super simple anybody can get into it if you're not for the full you know rpg style this is a very fun and stress relieving game that is it for all of my games that well some of the games that i've been really loving for the cozy mood please let me know if you want to see more of these i have so many games on my pc and on my switch well not really on my switch but more on my pc so let me know what you liked and what you want to see more of thank you so much for watching please check out my gaming channel i've been posting i'm trying to post daily on there with face cam videos and all let me know if you want to see a part two of this thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye bye